to increase germination rate and your yield in your garden or in your farm, it's important to understand the structure of a seed, how it works and what is the function of each part inside the seed and what do they need. So in this video, we're going to focus on monocot seeds, which is one of the two big categories to distinguish seeds between themselves. The first video I made was on dicot seeds and we illustrated this with the bean seed. And today is going to be the corn seed to illustrate what is the structure of monocot seeds. So let's get started. Let's look at the structure of the corn seed. The last video was the bean seed and here we'll use the corn seed to see how monocot seeds are different from dicot seeds. For this, just like last time, we'll use these illustrations to see the different parts and their function in the seed. Before we put labels on the illustrations, we will look at a mind map to understand the relationship between the different parts and each of the functions. If you watch the other video, it will be quite similar, although there are some differences that separates these two types of seeds. Let's get started. Now, again, the plant kingdom divided into two categories based on how the plant reproduces. Some plants reproduce with seeds, other plants reproduce with spores. The plants that reproduce with spores are divided into two categories based on either they have flowers and fruits. The plants producing flowers and fruits are called angiosperms, while the ones that do not produce flowers and fruits are called gymnosperms. We are interested in angiosperms because that's what you can eat, flowers and the fruits. That's what you do in your garden and in your farm. Now, based on the number of cotyledons the seed of an angiosperm have, it will either be called a monocot when it have, has only one cotyledon or a dicot when it has two cotyledons. In the last video, we saw dicots. Now we're going to look at monocots. The corn seed is a monocot. The monocot seed has four parts, just like a dicot seed. The first part is the seed coat and offers protection. The second part is the endosperm, and this is the nutritive tissues inside the seed, act as a food storage that provides food to the seedling during germination. Then you have the embryonic axis, that is the future plant, and you have the cotyledon, which is singular in a monocot. Now, the important distinction here is that the cotyledon, there's only one of them in a monocot and it's called this cotylum. And its function change. In a dicot seed, the cotyledons act as food storage because they absorbed the endosperm. But in a monocot seed, the cotyledon act as a bridge between the endosperm and the embryo because the cotyledon will retrieve the nutrients stored in the endosperm and will give them to the embryo in the seed by using vascular tissues. So in the monocot, this cotyledon is not a food store but a food transfer device inside the seed between the endosperm and the embryonic axis. And in these seeds, the endosperm is prominent. It was not absorbed by the cotyledons and is there and visible in the seed. And that's why we'll call monocotyledons endospermic seeds, in the opposite of dicots that often are non-endospermic seeds. Now, let's dive a little bit deeper. So the seed coats in the monocot just have one layer because the testa and tegmen merged and you only have the testa, so only have one layer. And the embryonic axis is similar with again three parts, the plumule and epicadal that will become the future leaves and branches or what you call the shoot system, the hypocadal in the middle of the embryonic axis that is the future stem, and you have at the bottom the future roots called the radical. Now, Let's go back to our illustrations and put these names on it. First, we have the seed coat, the testa, that offers the protection. 
Then you have the embryonic axis, that is the future plant. So in a monocot, because you don't have these, this very nice symmetry that you have in dicot seeds, it's not a perfect division, but I kept the embryonic axis name so that you can relate to it. And it's also called like that and it has the same parts, but it's just that it's not as visible and developed as in a dicot seed. So again, you will have the plumule and epicallal, the future leaves and branches at the top of the embryonic axis. At the bottom, you will have the radical, the future roots, and in the middle, you will have the hypocaddle, the future stem. Then, on the top of the seeds, you'll have a big part, a big food store, that is the endosperm. That's what you see at the top. And all around the embryonic axis, you will have the singular cotyledon, that will be transferring the nutrients from the endosperm to the embryo by using vascular tissues. So here you go. You have the structure of a corn seed, a monocot, and now you can compare it with dicot seeds. So most plants will have these structures, but of course it can vary because there's so much diversity. But this is the foundation, and when you open seeds, you will often find these parts.